Venous thromboembolism is one of the most serious health issues in this country. VTE is estimated to affect up to 900,000 people each year in the United States. Somewhere between 60,000 to 100,000 people will die of it. It's a term that encompasses uh, deep vein thrombosis, otherwise called DVT or pulmonary embolism, PE. What happens is blood clot usually forms in one of the major veins in the leg or in the pelvis. Sometimes a piece of a thrombosis can actually break off and flow through the bloodstream and wedge into a smaller vessel somewhere downstream, down the line. If we identify things that are unique to venous thrombosis, we can potentially target those unique characteristics with a drug or a therapy to help reduce or eliminate venous thrombosis. At the University of North Carolina School of Medicine, the Wahlberg Lab is researching VTE and the steps that lead to blood clot formation. Through a series of experiments, we found that the, a protein that's involved in stabilizing blood clots called fibrin essentially traps and retains those red blood cells present in the clot. And so fibrin's a really interesting protein because it looks essentially like a, a mesh, it's like a web, and it has the elasticity of spider silk, and so it's very able to reinforce that clot and make it very stable. And we've also found that an enzyme called factor 13 um, that stabilizes the fibrin is critical for that process. So what's exciting exciting about this is that potentially we could target factor 13 and if we can block factor 13 or alter its activity, we could reduce the strength of that clot. So when it comes to VTE, what I hope ultimately uh, to have occur during my career is that we can move on from the existing blood thinners, the drugs that we have that are just kind of broadly anticoagulant, that just broadly prevent clotting and evolve you know, our understanding of venous thrombosis to a point where we can develop therapies that specifically target venous thrombosis and yet maintain normal clotting. Hematologists have made great strides in the prevention and treatment of VTE, but funding is necessary for continuing this promising work. So if we didn't have NIH funding, we, we simply couldn't do what it is that we're doing. The basic research is what's crucial for improving our understanding of diseases such as venous thrombosis. And with this research, our hope is to expose new aspects of thrombosis that can ultimately lead to cures. There's an unprecedented opportunity to try to capitalize on, on that and try to help our patients. The problem is that funding for research in uh, universities and other academic centers is at a crisis point. What has made biomedical research so in, important and so successful in the U.S. has really been uh, dependent on NIH funding and I think that as we look in this day and age to our competitive edge in the world, um, not knowledge for knowledge's sake but knowledge for translational aspects, that it's really important that we uh, continue to, to fund uh, research at the NIH level. Now is the time to invest in the National Institutes of Health to launch the field into the next generation of care for hematologic conditions.